I think the whole process of taking something that wasn't an industry or a business and going for it against all odds, that's just something that I learned so much from and it makes me incredibly proud that we were able to make this happen. Welcome to Let's Play by the Gamers, a podcast hosted by actress Kylie Vernoff. Fans know Kylie best as the fiery Susan Grimshaw in Red Dead Redemption 2 and Miranda Cowan in GTA 5. Our series features some of the most informed and exciting people in the gaming industry today. Kylie and our guests discuss careers, gaming, and so much more. If you like what you hear, be sure to check out thegamers.com website to hear exclusive bonus material from each of our guests. Everybody. Okay, I'm so excited. Today's guests are two of the most widely known and well-respected cosplayers in the world. Husband and wife cosplay team, Ben and Maya Bergman, but you probably know them as Mall Cosplay. Best known as the legendary Witcher Geralt of Rivia, Ben and Maya co-founded the company Defcon Unlimited. It's a studio dedicated to the creation of cosplay outfits, stunts, choreographies, all sorts of unbelievably awesome productions. The Defcon team creates cosplay outfits for games like Overwatch, Tomb Raider, God of War, Mass Effect, Mortal Kombat, and of course my favorite, Arthur Morgan. Ben and Maya are so busy they rarely have time for interviews, so this was truly an honor. All right, let's get into it. Thank you so much, Ben and Maya, for making time for me today. No You're problem. You're so welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having us. I kind of want to do this and, and um, forgive me because um, it might be ridiculous, but this is my attempt at this. Ready? Hello, world! <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> So, God, right? so, so, so um, you know my style. Very good. I do. And really, when <laughs> I say you. that I'm so grateful much. you found time today, I'm not kidding. I was saying to my producer last night, between the, the YouTube channels and the streaming on Twitch and the, the social media posts and all of the travel and appearances, I, I really think that you might be the busiest people in show business. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think show business in general is always uh, so, so busy for everybody. But yeah, you, you're kind of right. We are very busy, so sleeping is uh, very rare these days. Yeah, it's very rare that we <laughs> say yes to some kind of an interview or a podcast. So this is something special because we usually just reject it because we never have time. You know, I am really, really grateful. When we first started putting together this podcast, you were right on my list because you're doing something that I think is so passionate and, and beautiful. And I really wanted a chance to share it with our listeners. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. So I first found your work um, with Arthur Morgan, right? Oh, great. Uh, because, um, <laughs> and I think you're dressed as Arthur right now. Yeah, yes, exactly. It's, uh, <laughs> for the podcast. <laughs> Such so, a shame. There's no yeah. video. No, it's, it's just coincidence because usually Maya does my makeup. And um, this year I will travel alone sometime to uh, conventions. And now I have to learn her skills and today I, I trained so uh, so to say so it's just coincidence that I now look like Arthur so Maya how yeah. would you rate his work today Maya would you from one to ten how'd he do oh that's interesting I guess it's I guess it's a seven I'd say <laughs> Yeah, I would say it's a good. seven, but that's just because he doesn't have the right brushes because I kind of <laughs> lost them. So I'm going to buy a new one for him tomorrow so he can get like a 10 because I he's like, like super good at it. I was so surprised when he tried it the first time because this is only the second time he did his makeup by himself. And it, it's it's a seven, you know, for the second time. That's pretty good because yeah, I was expecting, is. I don't know, a two and a half or something. So it's a seven. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm impressed. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you the truth. When what? So I was not a gamer. So my my whole introduction to the gaming community was when the game was released. And um, oh wow, yeah. So I, you know, as as one of the characters, I got on Instagram and Twitter to sort of meet the the fandom. And I'm not kidding. I think the entire cast was sending the Arthur Morgan pictures around that you guys did saying. Oh, great. Aww. We were saying, this guy looks more like Arthur than Arthur. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, that's great to hear. I mean, it's a big yeah. compliment when the original crew uh, does something like that. But yeah, yeah it, it's great. 
Yeah, it's it's our favorite gaming character. So yeah. is it really? Well, yeah. tell me about that process. How do you get your ideas? Like, what what is the inception? How do you decide to to go forward with a character? Well, there's an like a very easy answer to that because it's yeah. usually just the beard. If a character has a beard, then Ben is gonna cosplay it. So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> because there is no like big process so behind it. Of course, sometimes like publishers ask us to do some characters and we only accept if they have a beard. And then when the first trailer of Red Dead Redemption came up, we were like, oh, we were so bummed because Arthur didn't have a beard back then. And we were like, oh, this this guy is so lame. We don't even like him. <laughs> and, and then later on, we found about uh, we found out about the opportunity that he could grow a beard. And we were like, okay, it's it's going gonna, it's, it's yeah. gonna to happen. <laughs> Back in the game. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I, I love that. I love that that's such a simple answer. So I'm going to guess that when you play through, Arthur is always bearded. Is that yes. right? Yes, yeah. for sure. Of course, of course. <laughs> my, my version has a very long beard. Not the longest one. It still looks uh, good. It's not like... like um, like Santa Claus, but he, he has a big beard, my, my Arthur. My uh, Arthur doesn't have a big beard, yeah, right? Yeah, mine is a little less bearded, yeah. yeah. He looks a little more like he's the handsome Arthur. He goes to the barber shop like once in a week and, you know, he takes care of himself. I love <laughs> it. And high honor or low honor? High, uh, The first, uh, yeah, high honor, of course. Yeah. First, first run through. I'm on my second one right now and... Yeah, it's it's a little lower because I decide like what I would do and not what Arthur would do. And I yeah, I just figured out that my own level of honor is a little bit lower than Arthur's, I guess. I, lo I, I like that you're being so honest there. My honor is so low be because <laughs> I panic and I accidentally shoot people when I don't mean to. <laughs> yeah, th that happens from time to time, but usually I just restart then. I don't want to yeah. shoot innocent people. But <laughs> yes, when, when there are some bounty hunters uh, chasing me, then of course I, I kill them. So, yeah. but, but I can, even... but, but can, I can make up later, just greet some people on the streets and then yeah. it's getting better again. <laughs> it's even worse when you shoot horses. Oh, that's like... the uh, I've punched my horse and oh. it literally it, it hurts my heart. <laughs> why did you do that I, I just meant to feed my horse and i accidentally punched him <laughs> that's okay, funny so let's back up to the beginning for, for yeah. this so before this was a business and all consuming what was it about cosplay that was appealing i, I think maya i i think i read that your first cosplay was meant to be something from middle earth but ended up as a, a vampire or something yeah, we went to a, like a convention. It was a Lord of the Rings convention. That's actually also the convention where Ben and I met. And um, we were so amazed like by everyone who was dressed up. And he, they were kind of making Middle Earth happen in real life. And by the, uh, like that time, I was such a big fan of the Lord of the Rings. And I wanted to be part of that world too. And for, so we planned for the next convention, we wanted to be part of Middle Earth as well. And then we did some research and we were three girlfriends and we wanted to do something together. And then we, I don't know, stumbled across Van Helsing movies and they had these three vampire brides. This had nothing to do with Middle Earth, but it was the perfect <laughs> costume for us. And it was a lot of fun still. And yeah. that's when you first met Ben? Yes. And Ben, your first cosplay was uh, The Crow. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. But it was an improvised costume because uh, my, my sister asked me uh, one night before my first convention if I would come uh, with her because her friends canceled on her and she was alone. So I had to improvise a very quick costume and that was the crow because it's basically only only makeup. I had already had the hair at that time 20 years ago. So I had long hair then and no beard. So it was perfect. <laughs> So it was sort of a happy accident that you found this. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, yeah, I, I liked it very much the first time uh, I've been to a convention and was also my, my first uh, yeah, cosplay. <laughs> and yeah, I, I like the community and the convention itself and that everybody is dressed up uh, like their favorite superhero or something like that. And after that, yeah, I became a cosplayer. And when did you realize that that you could monetize this passion of yours and and turn it into a, a full time career? 
Oh, yeah. Maya's better in telling that story. <laughs> oh, good. Tell me, Maya. <laughs> I was kind of holding back because I wanted to give Ben the opportunity. But um, <laughs> it was like when we met, we realized that it was a hobby for us. But Ben was a stuntman. He's a, like a pro He was a professional stuntman back in the day. And I was a dancer. And we always dreamed of doing shows together, like dance, stunt shows combined with cosplay. And we started doing that, but just for fun at different conventions. And then it turned out that like we could combine both of our passions so well. So we started to go to different conventions and make costumes together. And then one, that one day it happened at Gamescom and we were dressed up as uh, Star Wars characters. And then there was this game coming out. It was The Old Republic, was it? Yeah. I can't yep. re recall. Okay. It was uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. And uh, we, were, we walked by the booth and the people from Electronic Arts were like, you guys look amazing. You have to come on stage with us. And we're like, oh, oh, okay, that's cool. And we were so honored back then because it was like, yay, people of Electronic Arts are asking us to come on stage with them. And it was so great. And we went on stage and we did like a very, very small show, like, like a 10 second show. And um, after that, they asked us to do like a big show in Finland and in Sweden for them. And then they hired us for the first time to do that as like for money. And that was when we realized, okay, maybe we could earn some money with it. And then it went on and on. And then we built the first costume for them, which was for Mass Effect 3, the Commander Shepard uh, armor. And yeah, that was when we realized, okay, this could become a business. But still, there were like so many hard years followed after that because oh, really? there was so much work and so much pain and so much sweat went into that because it was like, it w there was no industry at all today there's such an like a cosplay industry but when we started like eight years ago everybody was like calling us out because we tr were trying to make money off cosplay and nobody really like the publishers didn't trust us because they thought we were like hobby people and it was a very very hard way but that was i think yeah that was the time when we realized okay that could be something so do you mean that the culture of cosplay was sort of looking down on the idea of monetizing it and, and turning it into a living? Mm, no, I, I'd no. say the, the publishers. All the other people. Yeah, yeah the, everyone else. The other people, yeah. Yeah, everyone so, else, so like the friends, cosplayer, family, yeah. Yeah, the, the cosplayer, uh, they would always love to do something like that and uh, earn money with their passion. So it's still the same. But back then, uh, cosplay, playing was some something weird and only for nerds it still kind of is but people nowadays know cosplay and it changed a little bit but it's yeah as i said all the other people like, like family and friends they, they were like uh, do you really think that it's possible i don't think so yeah. and yeah now of <laughs> course it's our main job and yeah now they know that it can work i mean I hate to use this word because it is so overused, but I just think that what you guys do is so cool. I mean, it's just, Thank you. it's so driven by your passions and, and that you let the fans in on the whole process is really special. And, and I wanted to talk a little about what Maya touched on about Ben, you, you are a stunt man by trade. And I think you're also quite a performer and, and I'm wondering how much do you have to do a lot of research to get the characters how they how they walk and <laughs> what do you do how's uh, your process like for that yeah <laughs> sorry that we're laughing but but uh, i get that question all the time and the answer is always no not at all <laughs> nothing not, not a little bit so people are always like so how oh, it's it's incredible how how you can impersonate the character is so good and i always say like yeah sometimes i even don't know the character like like uh gerald of rivia my 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 famous yeah most famous character uh, that's why most of the people know me because From of the Gerard. Witcher, right is that yeah, ex Witcher? yeah. exactly exactly it's incredible uh, thank you so much and, and people are always like hey you even talk like him you walk like him how did you do that and i haven't played the games i haven't read the books so i don't know nothing about it so it's just just uh, being a bad, badass character and that's it so the answer is unfortunately it's, it's no i don't study the characters <laughs> you know I don't think that's unfortunate I'll tell you as an actor uh, you know I got my degree in classical theater and I had one teacher that said um, costumes and props and accents 
are sort of um, when you're having trouble finding the character from the inside out, start from the outside in. And some mm -hmm. people think of that as a cheat, mm -hmm. but it's actually a terrific way to find a character by starting it's, with the externals. Yeah, that's a good advice. I, I think uh, that that's what, what I do, not uh, intentionally, just just by looking at the character okay he's a big guy and he he looks badass so so he should walk and talk like this and that's it <laughs> yeah but of course in, in case of arthur i played the game and i know him but in case of the witcher i don't know him at all <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing right because it's it's just that your instincts are carrying you to a place and then i find that i think the fans sort of contribute their own part of it right when they see you and react to you as that character yeah of, of course it's uh I, I think they see it differently than i do because basically uh, uh, the characters are pretty similar it's always now nowadays the anti-heroes are very popular and and you could say that they are very similar in their behavior so it's it's not too difficult to just perform like they, they are but also knowing Ben for a very, very long time now, these like these badass anti heroes are exactly the kind of characters which he like they suit him best, I think. Not in like his real life character, because of course he's not a badass anti hero <laughs> in his personal <laughs> life. But uh, as soon as he like um, gets in his costume and gets into character, it's like always these kind of people. It's always like the, the cool guys and it's always like the cool but nice but badass guys. You know what I mean? Because that's also what, for example, Arthur is. He's a very nice guy, but he's also a badass. And he's he can also be like very, very mean sometimes. Yeah, but, he's flawed. But you know he has a good heart. And I think that's also what like most video game, like the male main characters are nowadays. And that suits Ben very well. And I think that's also what makes it so easy for him to perform as one of them. I love that. So Maya, <laughs> you, you you've said recently that you are backing away from the cosplay yourself and, and mm -hmm. focusing more on the production and the makeup. Right? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, and that's why, correct. Why are you making why do you want to spend more time on the other side of the camera, <laughs> so to speak? Well, it was a development, I I would say, because um back in the day we were both like most passionate about wearing the costume and I think it's the same now it's not that I enjoy the process of making the costume more than actually wearing the costume it's just something that happened when Ben became so famous for his cosplay stuff because then we focused more and more on like producing costumes for him bringing him to events and stuff and I usually do his makeup and most of his makeups take like very long for example four hours and when I did his makeup for four hours I'm like really not motivated to get like put on my own makeup for another two hours and then put on an uncomfortable costume and then walk around on a convention with him and walking around a convention with Ben is isn't fun I have to tell you because <laughs> you're not walking you're just standing the whole time because you're waiting for people to take their pictures and Ben is such a nice guy he takes pictures with everyone even after the convention closed he's he's still there taking pictures with people so walking around a convention with Ben with me dressed up in cosplay is just nonsense because it doesn't make any sense for me because it's just uncomfortable mostly and I have to take care of him also because he needs to drink sometimes and mostly he's crowded <laughs> so he needs a caretaker somehow so it was just somehow that uh, something that um, yeah, that happened over time. It's not that I hate cosplay or something like that. It's just that I'm not, I, I've been too far away from it for such a long time now to get back into it, I think. And yeah. also like the circumstances of our job and the way we do it, they just don't give us or give me the opportunity to make a costume that I would enjoy because of the quality and time issue. Yeah. I see. So it just sort of developed organically that it was yes. winding down. You know, I was I was wanting to ask you as someone who is a, a cosplay artist, Maya, um, I found when I um, when I first encountered cosplay, I went to um, London Film and Comic Con in August and met all these terrific, incredible cosplayers. Um, mm -hmm. But um, but amateurs, you know, for fun, not mm -hmm. not professional. And a lot of the women were telling me that they 
were feeling so much pressure to sexualize their characters yeah. in order to get attention that they found that they that they more frequently wanted to sort of cover their faces or even dress as male characters. And I, yeah. I wanted to ask you about that as a as a culture of cosplay. I guess there are two different sides of it because on the one hand you have the people who just enjoy like when you when you take the same issue to social media for example because the cosplay has like become a social media thing nowadays there's literally nobody I know that does cosplay but doesn't have a social media account for his own cosplay cosplay things mm -hmm. so when you when you look at all the famous female cosplayers most of them are like most of their characters and most of their cosplays are super sexualized. Like everything is even sometimes there are Assassin's Creed characters taken down to like a bikini level, but still wear the label of Assassin's Creed. And I think it's perfectly fine if you do it because you enjoy the process of building a sexy version of an Assassin's Creed character, which is, I think that's totally fine because it's for your own fun. But I get the feeling that more and more people start to do this kind of cosplay or um, shift their original dream of being a cosplayer into this like sexy cosplay image because they realize that when you are female, you get so much more attention for doing this kind of cosplay compared to so many great female artists that don't get any recognition for the kind of work they do and for their skill level. And this is something that annoys me from day one because I know some super skilled female cosplay artists and they only have like, I don't know, 10% of the following they could have when they started showing more skin. And this is something that's really annoying um, when you think about it, like from a business point of view, because I at some point stop because I know if I don't show uh, much skin, which I'm, I, I don't want to, which I, if I don't show my skin more, if, if I don't show more boobs or something, I know I will never, ever be as successful as Ben is, for example. And if you do this for a living, you have to make these decisions. Is that going to be worth it? And I, I always knew it's not going to happen. So I kind of quit because it wouldn't, it wouldn't push our business in any kind of way. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Uh, yeah, I absolutely do. A young woman just this morning sent me on Instagram um, her, her Susan Grimshaw uh, cosplay for, for PAX yeah. uh, this weekend. And I was so um, just overwhelmed by the, the attention she put into it. She's probably in her 20s, you know. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I thought, I just love that this is a character that someone wants to identify with and, and create a costume. You could tell she put so much work into the scar and, and, and to, the, to the hair. Um, but Susan is not hypersexualized. I mean, she has some cleavage showing, but, you know, she's a... <laughs> she's she's got wrinkles and I she's and a I, normal woman I would she's say she's a normal woman yeah with with skills with a shotgun yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I you know I hope that with movements towards um towards more female protagonists that that female cosplayers will have that same opportunities that the that the male cosplayers are having yeah that would be great on the other hand we need to say that they are only a, like a very small there's only a very small amount of male cosplayers which are like so successful and famous so i would also root for the male cosplayers to show more of their work and don't be afraid because there are like male cosplay is something that should be so much bigger because there are so many more female cosplayers so i think we should also encourage the guys oh that's interesting so there are a lot more female cosplayers than male. I, yeah. I wouldn't have thought of that. That's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, especially when it comes to uh, the business mm -hmm. uh, or, or the, the famous cosplayers, then it's definitely much, uh, many more women. So oh, yeah. yeah, it's like, like in the model uh, business, it's uh, there are more female models and the most successful models uh, on the planet are uh, women. So it's the same in, in cosplay. Oh, I didn't know that. That's fascinating. <laughs> so I also was thinking, as I was going through your Instagram posts, and um, I love following you. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. I, really, I didn't know that. I really enjoy seeing the process, the workshop. I just, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. Um, oh, by the way, was that a 3D printer that I saw in the workshop? Yeah, <laughs> we, we have several 
3D printers. Yeah, three of them, because sometimes we have to, to print so much stuff, so we need more of, than just one. Yeah. It's incredible, the work. But I, <laughs> but I was noticing that as much as you share with the fans, I, I noticed that you're both also now talking about I guess what I interpreted as wanting to have this really authentic connection with the fans, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed yep. to just building brands. And I think specifically with you, Ben, I think I, I saw that you were reminding people that they may compare themselves to you and may compare their work to yours, but you wanted to remind them at the fans that you've got a whole team behind you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's important. Um, I think uh, cosplay got a little bit too competitive and people compare themselves always to the best of the best. It's, I mean, it's a social media problem in general uh, whenever it comes to, you know, like fitness models or stuff like that. We always compare ourselves to the best of the best on uh, Instagram. So it's the same in the cosplay business. But I think especially cosplay is all about the fun and you should have fun when you build it and you should have fun when you wear it. And I always, all around the planet, uh, when I'm at conventions where the cosplay level uh, is pretty low, sometimes you have countries, uh, small countries where people can't uh, get uh, all the best materials and stuff like that, then the level, of course, is lower than in, in, in the US, for example. And uh, when the level is very low, the people have more fun so uh, they they don't compare each other to the best of the best because they can't. So uh, I always try to remember the people that it's all about the fun and not uh, being the best because it's it's just uh, um, yeah, it's hard to be the best in something where you don't get points or stuff like that. It's all about if people like you or not. And yeah, when you are at a convention, usually people like everything. So. Uh, you you shouldn't pay too much attention to social media and just just do your hobby and have fun and enjoy it. So I always try to remember people. Uh, yeah, to do I thought that. that was really terrific that you wanted to sort of remind them. And I and I think Maya, I read something that you wrote about, you know, you and you and Ben seem to very much live your your whole lives um, out in the open. Mm -hmm. um, and you were saying, but but please understand, we're not. <laughs> Our lives are not perfect. We are a real couple. We fight. We we have worries and stresses and um, yeah, sure. And, and why was why why was that so important for you to 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 put out there? Well, I think it's a struggle that both of us go through because, um, to be honest, we started the cosplay thing because of the cosplay, not because of social media, but most people on social media start social media for the sake of social media because they want to get famous. That was mm. never our approach. It just happened. And we were like freaking lucky that it happened to us because it was not nothing that we made happen. It was other people that shared our work and, um, that's how how the whole thing works like the whole social media thing works because other people make you who you are and it doesn't really matter what you do it just matters if other people like you and to me that is a very um stressful thing to think about because um we put ourselves out there and of course you have to like you build your own house on other people's property because you don't own Instagram. Instagram can shut down your account in a second and you can do, you can do nothing about it. And this is why it's, for me, it's so important to not put us out there as someone who, who is someone special because you have a few Instagram followers and we are just normal people who happen to have a few Instagram followers. And that is why we can live from, or we can live by doing cosplay and we can pay our bills with it. But I think it's super important to not forget that this could end every day. Uh, just like you can get fired in your job, you can also get fired from social media or you can get a huge shitstorm, which you didn't expect, and then it's over. And I don't. I think it's not right that you compare yourself to someone you like. You see on the internet who can decide what and what not to show you, and then you compare your own life and maybe degrade your own life by comparing yours to theirs. And this is just something that's going to make you unhappy. And this is why we are so 
it's so important for us to uh, let everyone know that we are just normal people and that social media is, is great and it it helps us a lot but it's just social media and it's just what we want to show you i have to be honest we could be so much more successful and we could earn so much more money if we just not decide to live like that because we could do so many like corporations and product placements and stuff like that but we turn everything down that we don't think that our followers are going to like it because we don't want to be that shallow personality we want to do what we like to do and that is very hard to maintain because you you need to make money and people are throwing product placements and stuff like left and right at you and you just have to decide no i'm not going to do it because this is not who i am and i just want everybody to be who they are and this is like super important to me yeah it's uh, i think it's uh, one of the most important things uh for me in, in social media is to be yourself and be exactly like who you are uh, even though it maybe means that not everybody will like you um but the people who stay and the people who like you they like you for for what you really are and that that that's the best you don't have to pretend to be somebody else uh especially when you meet them in in person maybe one day so it's it's always good to be yourself and it's easier it makes things some parts easier and some parts a little bit more difficult like uh Earning money is more difficult when you stay true all the time. Yeah. I, you know, I was talking to a, a streamer last week and she she had a, a very similar situation that she played video games and she streamed and then she found that she could make a living on it. Um, mm -hmm. But then opportunities come for partnerships or or, you know, people in her industry. There's this tipping situation. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard. Right. Here's what I was thinking about, that it's hard for, in your business and in her business. Your work in a very real way is for the fans, right? You do mm -hmm. it yes. because you love it, but it, but, but it is entertainment. Mm -hmm. sure. sure. And so, it, and so it must be a really tricky balance to not take your satisfaction from how the fans react when you are creating it specifically for them. Oh, it's, it's so hard. It's super hard because you have to find the balance in between uh, doing what you like to do and what you love to do. And on the other hand, also entertain your crowd, like your audience, because this is what happens. People follow you for like one specific project and then they think you are going to um, like post more content that is exactly like what they liked in the first second when they started following you. But that's something you you, you can't keep up with. Because you don't know what this exact person wants to see from you. So that's, I think, why it's so important to truly be yourself and do what you like to do. But you get carried away so easily. Because, of course, you want the most likes. And, of course, you want the most followers. Because the more followers you get and the more likes you get and the more comments you get, the more, like, you're so much more interesting to your clients. Because in Twitch and stuff, you can get, like, tips and you can... Um, make money with that but we rely 100% on conventions but even more publishers who will ask us to make costumes for them because this is where the money comes from and ah, so I you see. so you need to like you have three I, 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 I would say you have three parts you have to satisfy you need to satisfy your audience which are your followers you have to satisfy yourself and also you need to satisfy your customer which are like the publishers and this is who like the balance is it's sometimes we say it sometimes it's it, it's it, it doesn't work you know you can't you have to decide like each project you have to decide who am i doing this for and this is very hard sometimes yes i imagine i imagine yeah. i mean i think when you're trying to find that balance of, you know, and I have a similar thing with my job and what I do for a living, like you, you want to, you want to act for me. I want to do what I love to do because it has always uh, given me joy. And mm -hmm. at the same time, it is how I make my living. So, uh, you know, these other things come in and when you, at the end of the day, are the, the product that you're selling, it becomes, it becomes hard to separate, right? What you love and what is expected. Yes. Yeah, I understand. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it got got harder uh, with Instagram stories because now you have to post something every day in the morning, <laughs> throughout the day, in the evening. Yeah. So yeah. it's your you put your whole life out there somehow. I, I saw Maya that you actually for your Instagram um, are going to just be doing exclusively in German, right? Yes. I I thought that was terrific. First of all, I just love the German language, but I don't understand <laughs> it at all. But <laughs> I loved what you said about it that for you you want to be authentic to who you are, and that's yes. your native tongue. Yes, and I I think it, it was the like it was a very cool decision for me because now I can just start my phone and I just um, do a story and I just post it. I don't even listen to it again because I know what I said is exactly what I wanted to say because it's my first language and of course I know how to say the things I think in my first language. Ben, on the yeah. other hand, sometimes records his story for like and I'm not kidding for like forty times yeah. before he posts them. Because he's so insecure about his like his English and stuff, and he just just redoes them again and again and again and again, and it's, sometimes it, it it's stressing me out because it feels like hard work when he posts his story. <laughs> it's that perfectionism. Well, yeah. I think for both of you, I think your your English is a perfect. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> my, my Maya's English is perfect. My, mine uh, is no, uh, no, no. well. I can talk. <laughs> people understand what I've tried to say so it's sometimes good enough yeah but but uh, with Instagram stories for example it's especially when uh, I do always funny stuff and I, I don't want the funny stuff to be interrupted by bad English so so I always uh, listen to myself after that and say, oh that was a mistake that's not correct so do it again do it again do it again and to, to my English it's uh, at least uh, from my point of view good enough to to post it so otherwise i think it's not funny anymore because yeah, uh, it, uh, yeah instagram stories lives from uh, authenticity is is that an english word i don't know yeah that is yeah. that's right so, so it has to be authentic uh, so it shouldn't be in in a in bad english so in, you know what i mean i do like a punchline can get ruined if you use the wrong word <laughs> yeah exactly so <laughs> That's why sometimes, uh, yeah, it really takes up to 30 minutes or more for, for a funny Instagram story. Yeah. Well, you make me laugh quite a bit. So I think, <laughs> I think it works. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So you are Thanks. so open. You have your marriage and your work life and all that. And, you know, I was showing, you know, I know you just lost your beautiful yeah. Dexter. Mm -hmm. So I actually cried because I'm such an animal lover myself. My daughter cried too, by the way. Oh, uh, okay. it's such a beautiful tribute. Is there anything in your marriage or in your lives that you that you decide to keep totally private and just for the two of you? Well, that's a good question. I I, I would say no. I mean, uh, I I would always skip details, but I'm I'm very open about everything. I'd say, yeah. I what about say, you, Maya? Mm, not actively it's not like we have this one topic like you know many youtubers they don't show their home for example because that's not you know that's the private part of their life mm -hmm. but i i wouldn't say that there's this one topic but mm, i would like very like personal emotions that is is something i would never post on instagram when i'm for example crying because i'm i feel like it's unfair that the other company got the job instead of us or something i would never post like personal emotions because i just think that is something that is too private that's something i talk to my friends about and my family and ben but not the not the internet i think that's a there's a very uh, very sharp or like a strong line I draw there because this is something I don't want to see from other people and that's also nothing I want to post but I don't I don't think there is no there's anything that we like rule out completely no mm -hmm. no, no no not completely so, no. sometimes I, I think uh, you have to be careful uh, Maya and me we are talking a lot about that when when something makes you really angry you, you shouldn't rant about it too much on social media uh, many people do uh, but I think uh, it's it's better to to post positive stuff. And so of course sometimes you you can say something about your own opinion and that you think that this or that is wrong and sh should should be different. But uh, yeah, sometimes uh, some for example YouTubers they focus on negative stuff and that is yeah. what we what we always say we we should keep it 
positive, so at least yeah. to 95 mm. percent. I yeah, feel that from you guys. I really do. I feel like, uh, you know, even when you share the things that, you know, that might be painful, I feel like it has a very positive spin. I think that mm. you are really inspiring in, in the way that you show your lives. I, I, I appreciate that you keep it positive as, a, as an observer. Thank you. Thank you so, Thank you so much. much. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, when you are some kind of famous, you have uh, some kind of, uh, uh, was it responsibility? No, is that a word? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, you are. Yeah. You, you, like like Spider Man with uh, with great power <laughs> comes great. Uh, what is it? Responsibility. Great... Ah, is that the real word? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so sometimes you really have to think about the people uh, that you are a um, role model for some people in some some cases, and you have to think about what you spread to the world into the world so yeah it, it's important I, I think so Ben what would you tell me what is your favorite part of your job what is what is your very favorite part of it meeting and interacting with people that's always the best part of it uh, I, I'm always uh, when I'm at conventions I'm, I'm super happy when I can talk to people I always take my time to really talk to everybody not not normal small talk like hey how are you doing great weather oh nice to meet you and taking a picture that's it i really try to talk to everybody about something and i i sometimes i i search for stuff i can talk about maybe when when they have a um, interesting costume i talk about how did you do this or that or sometimes it's just how they say hello then we have immediately some some connection where we can talk about so i always try to make uh this moment special for them because sometimes they are standing for hours in a line and so i take my time for them for for everybody and that's my most favorite part and uh, that is why uh, i always try to focus on on my followers i always try for example to to answer too many messages or comments but yeah it's it's a lot but i always try it's very rewarding right i i when i I meet fans at a convention, I, you know, I was really surprised at how many I was hugging, but I really, I, especially if you know them from social media, you might recognize someone who's been supporting your work and, you know, they've come maybe a long way to meet you. I, I found that I was just really grateful and, and that connection was deeper than I anticipated. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. Crazy. I, I uh, thought about it and I think uh, when you are, I always say some kind of famous. I think that I'm not a famous person, but some kind of famous. So so you are in a very good position because when you meet somebody, they already know you and they are super happy about meeting you. So the, the first contact you have with them is always super, super positive, like it is nowhere else in your normal life. So uh, I think that's the reason why I love it so much because it's every time it's a... It's a good moment with everybody you meet for the first time. It's always a good moment. So, and that, that's uh, a thing you can only have when, when, yeah, you're some kind of famous. That is really well said. That is so true. People meet you with their best, open smiles, yeah. and grateful yeah. to meet you. That's exactly. really true. I hadn't thought about that, but that is really true. Well, <laughs> Maya, what about you? What's your what's your favorite part of this whole process for you? Um, this is gonna sound very cheesy, I guess, but to be honest, to seeing Ben so happy, because, <laughs> yeah, <Thank> you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> um, no, I think, I, I really think that's it, because when I met Ben, he was like, a, he was somehow, he was a different person, and his life wasn't like in a, in a great, uh, in a, he, he wasn't in a great stage of his life, and like seeing the development over the years and to like seeing him the way he is nowadays even like every day not only at conventions when he meets people and seeing that he found his like his true calling I would call it that makes me incredibly happy and proud and also very emotional because I just I, I'm just happy that we went on this way like we walk this way together and now we are at a point where we can be really proud of what we achieved. And it's just, I think the whole process of 
taking something that wasn't an industry or a business or something and going it like going for it against all odds that was that's just something that I learned so much from and it ma makes me incredibly proud that we were able to make this happen and um yeah in the end like achieving this goal to be made to be able to make a living from your passions that's just something that gives me a lot of hope for the future and for myself and I think to be like the CEO of your own company in the age of I don't know 22 that's pretty fucking cool I guess <laughs> so. that's really fucking cool <laughs> I, that is first of all that is not cheesy at all Maya I think that your real love for uh for Ben and for what you've accomplished together and and yeah seeing that hard work can can bring real results and that you get to enjoy them because you guys are obviously working your asses off at what you love you know there is luck involved but you guys are working hard i i actually love your answer i think it's beautiful <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> me, me too. I love it. <laughs> so I as, we're winding, as we're winding down here, I would love yeah. to uh, ask you sort of our signature questions. So um, maybe we'll, we'll start with you, Ben, on this one. Um, I'd love, since we know that we can't do anything alone, and you guys are very open about saying that you need your whole team, right? This is a community. Sure. I would love if you could give me an example of a time in, in your life or in your career when someone recognized something special in you and and gave you an opportunity to shine okay yeah the most obvious thing is definitely my work with cd project red the publisher from the witcher because that's somehow everything started uh we posted a uh, just a makeup test of Geralt, and then they immediately sent us an email and asked me if i want to be their Geralt. and since then I work for them all over the world as uh, Geralt of Rivia. And um, in the past four years, it was, I, I could say, like 50% of all our customers were CD Projekt Red. Wow. That's incredible <laughs> that they saw a makeup t test and just yeah. gave you this beautiful opportunity. Yeah, yeah that was quite interesting <laughs> because there was no co uh, costume at that time, only the makeup test. And then we had to make it, get it done for the first event. Yeah, it was great. Wow, that's, that's a lot of faith they put in you. That's terrific. <laughs> and what yeah. about you, Maya? Same question to you. Uh, I have to be honest, it's a really hard question for me to answer. Um, if I'm totally honest, I would say I. it was last year because um i really i really enjoy what we do and it makes me incredibly happy to see it all so successful but sometimes or over the fa past few years i realized that sometimes it's just too much for me and sometimes it's just too much work for me because the amount of work we have to do sometimes is just incredible and um, there's so much pressure sometimes. And sometimes I realize that maybe this is not the job I can do for the rest of my life. And I was also very responsible for everything that went on in our company, um, like the bookkeeping, like all the emails, all the all this kind of stuff. And also, in addition to that, the work in the workshop and the traveling. So um, I guess it was last year that I was at a point where I was like, okay, I I can't really do this anymore. The pace is crazy. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of done. I feel burned out. And then Ben stepped in and asked me what I really want to do with my life and what makes me like truly happy. And then we talked about it and I was like fighting it because I, 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 I was like, I, this is my life. You know, this is my job. This is what we achieved. I'm, I have to do that forever. And he was like, no, that's not important because if we, if I can't have you in this job anymore, I will take over and I will take on like doing your work as well. And I will figure it out so you can go and do what you want to do and where you can shine because it's not a, it's not a, um, it's not, it's no secret that all the work, like all the years we worked for making mostly Ben shine, you know? And um, as a very strong personality, I also have my own dreams. And I think it was last year that Ben said, you know, no matter what, I, I, will, I will make this happen for you. I will give you a life where you can do 
what you want to do and you can shine if you want to shine. And I think this is something that changed tremendously over the last few months that I finally feel like even though we are very su successful in cosplay and it's a very good job and it's a well-paid job, I'm still able to go for other dreams I still have in life. And I think this is the first time I feel like someone is really giving me an opportunity to shine. Okay, well, I'm uh, trying not to cry. I'm trying not to cry over here. Yeah, me too. It's really beautiful. It's really beautiful. And 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 so, um, do you know that's that's what that's what trust in your partner is to say yes. This is what we've built together, but I can hold down the fort while you try something else. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't want it to be so deep and emotional, but I, I read your question like three hours ago and I, I was thinking about it like the whole time. And I was like, I don't know. I never had this kind of situation. And now I feel like, yeah, maybe this is the situation. So yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't want to. Actually, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really, I'm really glad because honestly, most of us have a time in our life when someone sees that spark in us and sees that we are capable of doing something more than what we're doing right now. Yeah. Right. That is the answer. And I just want you to know that um, I I was very clear from the beginning with my producers that I wanted to speak to both of you, that it, that speaking to both of you was critical for me. Oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> What I always say, Maya is more more cosplay than I am because <laughs> I, I'm just the face. Maya yeah. is, uh, is, does so much more work here. So it's very important that, that we are a team. So it's more cosplay is two people. And and the other people in the workshop, <laughs> but, but the, the the front line is Maya and me, not only me. Oh. Can can I ask can I ask something of you? Um, I, so I've only been to Germany one time. I, we went to Stuttgart, and I'll tell you the whole story another time. It was incredible, except that my daughter was turning two and had a double ear infection, and I really saw nothing. Oh. But I've <laughs> always wanted to go back. So um, if I come, can I visit the workshop? Of course. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I have to clean up then, but you yeah. definitely can. Call first, please. <laughs> I will call first. I will give you plenty of notice. This won't be happening anytime soon. Although I hear that um, our game has a lot of German fans, so maybe I'll get there eventually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great, yeah. Yeah. Do that. So. Looking forward to it. I would love it. Thank you both. This has been really, really just a, a, a beautiful conversation for me. It's so enlightening. And I really appreciate that you guys made the time. I know how busy you are. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It was great. All right. Well, have a terrific day. I know you've got uh, so much to get to. So thank you again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And see you soon. Maybe at another convention somewhere in the world. Yes, please. <laughs> Goodbye, world. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs>I'm sorry, but how cool are they? Ben and Maya are currently developing Kratos from God of War. I can't wait to see it. And they are producing a huge cyberpunk fan film. You can learn more about what they're up to on their socials. On Instagram, it's at mall underscore cosplay. On Facebook, mall cosplay. Thank you for listening. Let's Play was brought to you by The Gamers, a community that connects all gamers who identify as women and welcomes people of all genders who support this. Let's Play was co-produced by Kylie Vernoff, Jenny Grossa, and the Gamers team, Laura Deutsch, Rebecca Dixon, Heather Awida, and me, Verna Maloney. Please visit thegamers.com for show notes, to access exclusive bonus material, and to learn more about the Gamers community. And if you liked what you heard, we'd so appreciate it if you subscribed and gave us a five-star review. Thanks again for listening.